Hello everybody, Brad the Guitar just here. Enjoy the video. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Here's something I thought was really cool. Um, Jason Becker, the guitar player who developed Lou Gehrig's disease back in, I think, around 1990, you know, he had a slow, kind of steady decline where he lost all of his motor functions. Uh, and he was an amazing guitar player back when he, re he could actually play. <laughs> You know, you'll find videos of him online jamming with the likes of Marty Friedman and, and keeping up or exceeding what Marty Friedman was doing. Uh, you know, Jason Be Becker uh, has continued to, to write songs and write albums and compose music. He does it on a computer now. And he's coming out with a new album that has a, an amazing list of contributing guitar players. And just listen to this. Uh, his new album is going to feature... Uh, Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, Neil Schoen, Steve Morse, Paul Gilbert, Joe Bonamassa, Marty Friedman, Michael Lee Ferkins, Matthias Uckland, Greg Howe, Jeff Loomis, Richie Kotzen, Gus G, Steve Hunter, Ben Woods, as if that wasn't enough, Chris Broderick, Guthrie Govan, Yuli John Roth, and Trevor Rabin. These are the guitarists who are going to appear on this. There are other famous musicians as well, uh, uh, such as violinists and cellists, but we won't get into those. But I just heard the first track off of this, a uh, Morricone-inspired uh, track called Valley of Fire. And on this, 13 different guitar players take solos. You know, I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, if you're into instrumental music, uh, this might be for you. This looks like something that, that uh, is going to be really cool. It's definitely very inspiring, you know, that Jason Becker, who's had such bumps in the road, you know, is still out there making music and still pounding away and, and is, is inspiring people to not give up, you know. I mean, when you're hit with adversity like he clearly has been, you know, it would be very easy to just give up and say, you know, why me, God, and all this stuff. But, you know, he clearly has not done that. And then he's uh, still composing and still kicking ass and uh, definitely wish Jason all the best. And this sounds like it's going to be a great album. I saw this article as well. This is from a local New York uh, publication. And they're talking about uh, this guy who makes custom guitars from pieces of New York City's past. And it's pretty interesting because he... What he does is he goes around and he gets free wood from all these places that are renovating. These uh, places in New York City, you know, famous places like the Chelsea Hotel and uh, the spe you know the legendary Speakeasy, Chumleys. Places like this where you can uh, call him up and you can order guitars made from this material. Rick Kelly has been making musical instruments by hand for more than 50 years. The first instrument I made was a little... Ukulele was an art project in high school. The wood he uses, white pine, all reclaimed, discarded from buildings around the city. Some famous, like the Chelsea Hotel. The Chelsea Hotel would be a particularly neat one, considering all the history, the rock history that happened in that building. Kelly gets most of it for free. He calls the wood the bones of old New York came from those 300 year old giant trees and now it's been indoors for 160 70 years so it's super dry and really resonant it makes a great guitar but you know he's t to hear him talk about these woods you know he's talking about the fact that some of these trees that you know these buildings are made from they were these were old growth trees and so this is like kind of the first wave of, of lumber that was building the uh, building the United States and uh, the thing is you know a lot of these ancient trees you know they've been and like he points out they've been indoors for 160 or 170 years now and they've been curing all this time and and they're going to be very good wood to work with it's not like uh, it's not like wood that was just felled last year and put in a kiln you know this is gonna this is stuff that's uh that's that's got some age to it a lot of us are probably averse to the whole tone wood debate but if you're talking about acoustics um, there is definitely 
a difference between tapping on a piece of wood that's 300 years old and tapping on the same type of wood that was filled you know last year you are going to notice a difference and to round out the news i wanted to show this uh, because uh, it's interesting to uh, particularly to this channel because i do use these capacitors a lot amplified parts made this youtube video about the manufacturing of CE capacitors. Uh, CE distribution is the uh, wholesale arm of antique electronic supply and it's where I get a lot of my parts that I use and I stock up on a routine basis. And I've also used a lot of these capacitors and it's just interesting to see them being made. But these are being made one at a time on a machine that was originally owned and used by Mallory back in the day. So this made a lot of the original capacitors that we see in a lot of the old amplifiers that we tear apart on this channel. And it's just interesting that they're still using this particular machine, which they bought back from a Mexican factory about 20 years ago, I think they said. But yeah, you should check out this video. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, they show this dude just sitting there hand winding these things and uh, you know, he'll put the the uh, the dielectric and stuff in and he'll he's just doing it all by hand. He puts the anodes in and just does the whole thing by hand. So that will conclude the news. All right, guys, last week we tried a new segment on this channel. Uh, I took a look at um, an amplifier that was sent in to me by uh, a Norwegian fellow named Asli, or Asl, and uh, we looked at his Vingtor amplifier. It was something I'd never heard of. We don't really see Vingtor amplifiers over here in the U.S., so it was definitely uh, interesting to get a look at this amplifier, which was highly unusual. Uh, he uh, did a great job of filming it, and uh, we took a look at that over on Channel 2, and it's still over there if you want to go check that out. But I thought we would continue this idea and every week try to show something from, from one of you guys who have sent me clips. Because uh, every now and then I do get this, uh, guys who send me uh, clips of some unusual piece of equipment and you're asking me questions about it perhaps, or maybe you're just even showing it off. And um, It's always interesting to see this stuff and I thought I would share some of this stuff with you going forward. Uh, so we're going to do a new segment and we'll call it Your Equipment. So in this week's segment, we're going to take a look at this piece of equipment from Robert. Uh, he sent this in. This is a Gibson Maestro uh, Rotary. It's a solid state thing that they made between like 1971 and 1973, I think. Uh, I think it was actually used on some recordings in the studio by Pink Floyd. He showed this thing uh, and it's pretty pretty amazing. Look, check this out. Oh, I also forgot to mention that Robert is the fellow who bought my uh, Webster Chicago uh, wire recorder amplifier that I converted. Now this thing is pretty cool because it actually has a remote switch. You can switch it on and off uh, and you can see him kind of doing it there using the switch. But it also will allow you to change the speed remotely. I'm not sure. Um, he didn't send me a video of the pedal that he's using, but 
There's a pedal I guess that it come, came with that will allow you to do that. But just a really cool piece of equipment. Thanks, Robert, for sending that in. And if you guys want to get in on the act and you want to send me in clips of some unusual piece of gear that you own and you want to show off to everybody, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, just hit me up at my uh, address. If you do make videos, just try to make them as well lit as you possibly can. And if you want to tear the equipment down and show us the inside, that's all the better. All right, guys, that'll do it for this week's Leftovers from Ship Post Friday. I hope you guys enjoy these videos over on Channel 2. Uh, thank you for keeping on uh, coming over and uh, checking them out. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, thank you, Robert, for sending in that very cool video of your uh, Gibson Maestro. Super cool piece, super rare, and thanks for sharing it with us. For now, we will see you all later, and you all take care.